It's nighttime in the big city. An elderly man looks at his wife's empty pillow. A nervous thief stands in a doorway. It's theme time radio hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Welcome to Theme Time Radio Hour. Leave your iron at the door, because tonight we're going to be playing music of the highest caliber. We're going to shoot from the hip and put another notch on our barrel as we look at the world of guns. So don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. A gun is a tool, Marion. No better, no worse than any other tool. An axe, a shovel, or anything. A gun is as good or as bad as the man using it. We're going to start things off with a record that starts out like a gunshot. That's Junior Walker and the All-Stars, a lot less slick than a lot of the other records on Motown. Junior didn't think he could sing. As a matter of fact, the only reason he sang on that record was because the guy he hired didn't show up. He wasn't going to eat the session fee, so he stepped behind the mic and had himself a number four hit in the process. Shotguns are also known as... Scatter guns, fouling pieces, or two shoot guns. They were a replacement for the blunderbuss. Let's get another shotgun off the rack and hear what Tennessee Ernie Ford has to say about it. Tennessee Ernie was known as the old pea picker because he always used to say, Bless your pea picking heart. He recorded 50 singles during the early 50s, a lot of them making the pop charts. Some of them were straight country, like this song he wrote about a hunter going out after rabbits. Here's Tennessee Ernie with the shotgun boogie. That stands in the corner where the barrels are straight. I look out the window and over the gate. The big fat rabbits are jumping in the grass. Wait till they hear my old shotgun blast. Shotgun boogie. I done saw your track. Look out, Mr. Rabbit, when I cock my hammer back. Well, over on the ridge is a scaly bark. Hickory nuts are big, you can see them in the dark The big fat squirrels, they scratch and they fight I'll be on that ridge before daylight With a shotgun boogie All I need is one shot Look out, bushy tail Tonight you'll be in the pot What she had, she said, a fox 410. I looked her up and down, said, boy, this is love. So we headed for the brush to shoot a big fat dove. Shotgun boogie. Boy, the feathers flew. Look out, Mr. Dove, when she draws a bead on you. I sat down on a log, took her on my lap. She said, wait a minute, bud, you got to see my pap. He's got a 16-gauge choke down like a rifle. He don't like a man that's a going to trifle. Shotgun boogie, draws a beat so fine. Look out, big boy, he's loaded all the time. gentleman order he said no brush hunters gonna get my daughter he cocked back the hammer right on the spot when the gun went off i outrun the shot shotgun boogie i wanted wedding bells i'll be back little gal when your pappy runs out of shells that was that old pea picker with the shotgun boogie Tennessee Ernie Ford is a guy who's no flash in the pan. You know what that means? When a flintlock's browning pan powder burns or flashes, but fails to ignite the main powder charge in the barrel, it's known as a flash in the pan. That's why we use that phrase to describe a person who claims great skills, but accomplishes nothing. I think we all know some people like that. This is Theme Time Radio Hour, and we're talking about bean shooters. The Gat, the Rod, the Rusco, the Heater. The convincer. Pistols, cannons, blunderbusses, muskets, and rifles. We're talking about guns. 
And Albert King's got one too. It's called the Love Gun, and he's got you in his sights. least known of the three kings of the blues, B.B., Freddie, and Albert. Albert was well known as a guitarist, but before he picked up guitar, he briefly played drums for Jimmy Reed. He's performing here with the four men who wrote the song, Steve Cropper, Doc Dunn, Al Jackson, and Booker T. Jones, Booker T. and the M.G.'s. Rude Boys were part of Jamaican culture. The term originated in the ghettos of Kingston, coinciding with the popular rise of dance hall celebrations. This affected, unemployed, urban youth often found temporary employment in these dance halls. They would then go and crash their competitors' dances. The violence became an important part of young Jamaican lifestyle, giving rise to gang violence. Here's a song by the Valentines, all about the rude boys. They got the guns fever. I'm a bit confused The gun fever is there The gun fever Rudeness and gun Is the talk of this town The gun fever is there The gun fever Every time you read the clean our star This man shot dead all who cannot war It's the fever Oh, the gun fever the simplest thing is blam blam blam. What is this in no, all little island? It's the fever, oh the gun fever. You can know a rude chap by the way he says his cap. Lord, the gun fever is bad. The gun fever. The rude dog is seen, Lord. I don't know what it means. The gun fever is bad. Time you really clean our star is man shot dead or who can at war. It's the fever, oh the gun fever. The simplest thing is blam blam blam. What is this in our little island? It's the fever, oh the gun fever. Lord, the 
time you really clean our star This man shot dead our roof young and war It's the fever Oh, the gun fever The simplest thing is blam 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 What is this in all little island? It's the fever That was a little story of gun violence down in Trenchtown, courtesy of the Valentines. Guns fever. Even in the 60s, gangster culture emulated movies. The rude boys wore sharp suits, thin ties, and pork pie hats in imitation of American gangster movies. You can't get away. Drop the gun. Come and get it. You're not taking me to jail. You have to kill me first. Go ahead, shoot. Those all kinds of guns. The Tommy gun was a family of American submachine guns that became famous during Prohibition. It's also known as the Chicago Typewriter. So here's The Clash with their song, Chicago Typewriter. Tommy Gun by The Clash, a song written by Mick Jones and Joe Strummer. Joe explained that he got the idea to write Tommy Gun when it occurred to him that terrorists, like rock stars and movie stars, probably enjoy reading the press about their so-called triumphs. Each and every year, approximately 10 billion bullets are sold in the United States alone. From 1993 through 1997, 
less than 1% of serious, non-fatal, violent victimizations resulted in gunshot wounds. We just want to remind you that we here at Theme Time Radio Hour do not condone violence, nor do we encourage it. Here's Tough Talking Wanda Jackson. She's got a bone to pick with a chick. Some gal's been bird-dogging her. And if she ain't careful, she's going to be pulling pellets out of her backside. Because this gun don't care who it shoots. I don't like the way you touch my baby. If you're smart, you'll turn him loose. Unless you crave danger or you're crazy. Because this gun don't care who it shoots. So it's all up to you now, pay attention Cause this gun don't care who it shoots Shows no favors, has never called a truce So it's all up to you now, pay attention Cause this gun don't care who it shoots No, this gun don't care who it shoots No, this gun don't care That was the Atomic Fireball. Wanda Jackson on Theme Time Radio Hour, where we're talking about guns. The most famous female sharpshooter wasn't Wanda Jackson. It was Phoebe Ann Bosey, better known as Annie Oakley. She was born on August 18, 1860, and passed away in 1926. She could use a 22 caliber rifle at 90 feet, and split a playing card edge on, and put five or six more holes in it before it touched the ground. I wouldn't want to make her mad. Well, usually I have a story about the people we play, but I know nothing about this next fella, except that he's a little bit dangerous. Here's Robert Jefferson. I got my equalizer. I got my equalizer. I got my equalizer, too. You may be tall. You may be strong. My equalizer makes me right and you wrong. I got my equalizer. I got my equalizer too I'm a little piece of leather Well put together Make me man I'll cloud up like the weather I got my equalizer I got my equalizer too I can stand right here And make it bark like a dog When I hit you my friend I know you got to fall Too. I can spit an atom and make an A-bomb 
Lord. Don't push me or I'll blow you to kingdom come. I got my equalizer. I got my equalizer too. Now I can peel the apple with a razor sharp knife. I can cut you down and won't even apologize. I got my equalizer. I got my equalizer too. Now I can kill your spirit and dare your blood to move. I can tell you, baby, now I'm real, real cool. I got my the woefully underrecorded Robert Jefferson. I got my equalizer. And I'm not talking about the audio equipment. Gene Autry had a cowboy code, sometimes known as the Cowboy Commandments, because a lot of his Saturday matinee saddle pals wanted to be just like him. I will now swear you in. One, the cowboy must never shoot first, hit a smaller man, or take unfair advantage. Number two, he must never go back on his word or a trust confided in him. Number three, he must always tell the truth. Number four, he must be gentle with children, the elderly, and animals. Number five, he must not advocate or possess racially or religiously intolerant ideas. Six, he must help people in distress. Seven, he must be a good worker. Eight, he must keep himself clean in thought, speech, action, and personal habits. Nine, he must respect women, parents, and his nation's laws. Ten, the cowboy is a patriot. And I'm not ashamed to say that I live my life according to that code. Quite a man, that Gene Autry. Back in the saddle again. Johnny Cash also had a cowboy code. Here's Johnny for the story of the Old West, where a mother is imploring her son, please don't take your guns to town. The man in black, Johnny Cash. A young cowboy named Billy Joe grew restless on the farm. A boy filled with wanderlust who really meant no harm. He changed his clothes and shined his boots and combed his dark hair down. And his mother cried as he walked out. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Kissed his mom and said, you're Billy Joe's a man. I can shoot as quick and straight as anybody can. But I wouldn't shoot without a cause, I'd gun nobody down. But she cried again as he rolled away. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Song is on, he rode his guns hung at his hips. He rode into a cattle town, a smile upon his lips. He stopped and walked into a bar and laid his money down. But his mother's words echoed again. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't Take your guns to town He drank his first strong liquor then To calm his shaking hand And tried to tell himself at last He had become a man A dusty cowpoke at his side Began to laugh him down And he heard again his mother's words Don't Take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Bill with rage, then Billy Joe reached for his gun to draw. But the stranger drew his gun and fired it before he even saw. As Billy Joe fell to the floor, the crowd all gathered round. Wondered at his final words Don't take your guns to town, son Leave your guns at home, Bill Don't take your guns to town
That was Johnny Cash, Don't Take Your Guns to Town. Sometimes you're just too young to know. A song about a boy getting dressed up, combing his hair, probably going to town for a Saturday night. I hope he's not carrying a Saturday night special, which is a slang term for any inexpensive handgun. The term was first used, as far as we know, in the August 17th, 1968 issue of the New York Times. And I quote, Cheap, small caliber, Saturday night specials are a favorite of hold-up men. Even today, it can be found in many of the top crime spots. Guns are dangerous, but they still hold a certain romantic allure. Here's Los Lobos with the title song from their album, La Pistola y el Corazón. The Pistol in the Heart. I caught up with David Hidalgo at the Amoeba record store near historic Haight-Ashbury, or as I call it, Hashbury. I asked him what this song meant. Here's what he told me. The song is, uh, well, it's in the style of a corrido, a Mexican ballad. It's uh, basically, this guy is you know, saying that uh, there's no way he can explain the way he feels and there's no remedy for the feelings he has and uh, that the, the moon's telling him one thing, the stars are telling him another and, uh, and when the sun comes up, it sings him this sad song that uh, the kisses that, you, that you've given me, you know, this is that, uh, or what's killing me. As my tears dry up, all I have left is my pistol in my heart. in the wrong. That was La Pistola y El Corazón, talking about the gun in the heart. 
I drew first. You don't have to do me no favors, Pappy. If I was doing you a favor, I'd let him hang you right now and get it all over with. But I don't want you to get off that light. I want you to see what it means. To have to live like a big, tough gunny. So don't thank me yet, partner. You'll see what I mean. Here's some famous historical gunfighters. Billy the Kid, who said, One man can't handle an uprising. I don't care who he is. Wyatt Earp, who when someone said to him, You don't admire peace, replied, It's not real easy to like something you know nothing about. Bat Masterson, who was overheard saying, A man can't die with something on his mind. Johnny Ringo, who on more than one occasion uttered, You don't want the only evidence of your life's work to be bullet holes in men. Don Lon Yankee. Prove it. Next up, we're going to play you two versions of Pistol Pack and Mama. Here's the man who wrote it, Al Dexter and his troopers. And this record sold three million copies in 1943. That'd be a lot of records now. It was a real lot of records in 1943. Here's Al and his story of a dangerous gun toting gal. The Pistol Packin' Mama. Drinking beer in a cabaret and was I having fun Until one night she caught me right and now I'm on the run Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down Pistol Packin' Mama, lay that pistol down She kicked out my windshield, she hit me over the head she cussed and cried and said I'd lied and wished that I was dead. Lay that pistol down, babe, lay that pistol down. Pistol packing, mama, lay that pistol down. And dancing with the blonde Until one night she shot out the light Bang, that blonde was gone Lay that pistol down, babe Lay that pistol down Pistol packing, mama Lay that pistol down I'll see you every night, babe I'll woo you every day I'll be your regular daddy If you put that gun away Lay that pistol down, babe Lay that pistol down, pistol packing mama, lay that pistol down. Dexter and his troopers. And I know you all have heard that. And I also know you all heard me talk about Sid Nathan, the owner of King Records. He was called Little Caesar because he was short, fat, and ruled his label like a dictator. But nonetheless, he knew what people wanted to buy. And he knew there wasn't that much distance between the white audience and the black audience. He took Al Dexter's song and handed it over to the Hurricanes. And it came out something like this. Actually, it came out exactly like this. Drinking beer in a cabaret And was I having fun Until one night scored me right And now I'm on the run Oh, lay that pistol down, babe Lay that pistol down A pistol pack in my mug Lay that pistol down Hit me over the head 
was the Hurricanes, with the R&B version of Al Dexter's Pistol Packin' Mama, both recorded for Sid Nathan's King Record Label. Listen to a little bit of Sid addressing the troops. Any of you record company employees might want to take some notes. If you want to be a genius, it's easy. All you got to say is, everything I heard is no good. Let me see the sales 90 days after they've been out, then I'll tell you how good it is. That's so much of a goddamn genius I am. We've done a lot of talking about small guns, but now it's time to come to the big guns. Cannons, battleship guns, German howitzers, American rail guns, the Gustav gun, and probably the biggest gun of all, the 42 centimeter Krupp howitzer, given the nickname William's gun. Here's a song about big guns by Jenny Lewis with the Watson twins. Jenny Lewis is a singer and a songwriter. She has a band called Rallo Kali, but this year released the record on her own. I caught up with Jenny and I asked her what the deal was with the big guns. I guess the big guns can be whatever exercises control over you or, you know, great boobs. But I'm not betting on the afterlife Then you kiss his lips He forgives you for it He forgives you for all you've done But not me I'm still angry What have I done? Why am I always missing?
was Jenny Lewis with the Watson Twins from her album Rabbit Fur Coat, The Big Guns, here on Theme Time Radio Hour. Well, let's see what the old email has for us. Today's message is from Gunter Schmidt in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Gunter writes, Dear Bob, I enjoy the show very much. I live with my mother and stay in her basement. I'm confused by something. I've never heard anyone use language the way you do. A few weeks back, you referred to one of the artists you played as a gangbanger, and you pronounced cigarettes as cigarettes. Can you explain this to me? Well, Gunter, I could, but I think perhaps it's more important that you get out of your mother's basement. But remember, it's dangerous out there, so prepare yourself accordingly. And thanks for the email. Hope that helps, Gunter. Here's an old friend of Theme Time Radio Hour. It's that practical joker, Jerry Irby. This song made it all the way to number 10 in 1948. Great Long Pistol, Jerry Irby and his Texas Rangers on Theme Time Radio Hour. Shoot him up. If I had a great long pistol, there's lots of things that I would do. I wouldn't go a hunting rabbit, I would go a hunting you. I'd teach you how to trifle on me And try to break my heart in two If I had a great long pistol Baby, what I'd do to you If I had a great long pistol There's lots of things that I would change I wouldn't start a playing cowboy Way out on the western range All I need is just one bullet And let me lay my eyes on you I teach you how to trifle on me And try to break my heart in two If I had a great long pistol I wouldn't want to be a cop I wouldn't want to play detective I just want to see you drop And then you couldn't trifle on me And always leave me in a whirl If I had a great long pistol I'd chase you all around the world Got my great long pistol And it's nice and shiny too So if you want to push up daisies Just let me lay my eyes on you You'd better start to praying, baby Praying that you can't be found Cause I've got my great long pistol And I'm gonna shoot you down I really mean it Yes, I'm gonna mow you down that was Jerry Irby and his Texas Rangers, and I hope you're still standing. If he had a great long pistol, he wouldn't want to be a cop or play detective. He'd just want to see you drop. All right, we're going to bite the bullet and keep on going. The bullet catch is a conjuring illusion in which a magician appears to catch a bullet fired directly at him. It's usually performed with a magician catching the bullet in his teeth. Penn and Teller up the ante a little and both fired guns at each other. I asked Penn Gillette what it's like to have a gun shot at you every night. Here's what he had to say. It's the most dangerous trick in show business. Twelve people have died on stage. Actually, it's now 13. They've died on stage. And the way you usually die doing the bullet catch is not by a mistake you make or the trick going wrong. Two or three of the people who died doing the bullet catch died before they even started the trick when someone in the audience stood up and said, hey, catch this, and shot them in the face. And I was walking through LAX and a bunch of uh, guys in gang attire yelled over to me, hey, are you the guy that can catch that bullet? And I spun around, stuck both hands in the air and said, it's a trick, it's a trick, it's a trick. I can't do it, I'm a liar, it's a trick. The Medallions recorded one of the most important records in doo-wop history. It was a record called The Letter. And in the spoken word section, lead singer Vernon Green says the following. 
let me whisper sweet words of pismotology and discuss the pompatoos of love. Put them together, and what do you have? Matrimony. In later interviews, Vernon Green could not remember what he meant by these lines. But I'm sure he knows exactly what he meant in this song, Don't Shoot Baby, Vernon Green and the Medallions. <laughs> My baby woke me this morning for broad daylight. I was high as could be and I couldn't get right. I shook my head and opened my eyes and looked up the barrel of a 45. Oh, don't shoot, baby. Don't shoot, baby. Don't shoot, baby. Don't shoot, baby. Let me talk things over with you. She said, the money I give you yesterday, you spend it on women and a gamble it away. And all that red stuff uh, on your face I guess you say it's tomato face oh, Don't shoot, baby Don't shoot, baby Don't shoot, baby Let me talk things over with you She said, tell me, who was you with last night? There's nothing on you that's uh, looking right I said, baby, please give me a break Don't break now, for goodness sake oh, Don't shoot, baby I can take, you can have my love and my money too But all I ask is baby please don't shoot Don't shoot baby Don't shoot baby Don't shoot baby Let me talk things over with you Oh baby please don't shoot me You just missed my head Oh baby please Just one more chance Oh That was Don't Shoot Baby here on Theme Time Radio Hour, and Vernon Green was staring down the barrel of a 45. Be careful, you don't want to get hit in the pompatoos. I wonder if he knew that the Colt 45 was invented by Samuel Colt. It was perhaps the most prolific pistol in the Wild West. He was issued a U.S. patent in 1836 for the firearm equipped with a revolving cylinder containing five or six bullets with an innovative cocking device. I think it's important to know whether there are five or six bullets in it. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You got me, Doc. Huh? I'm going. Everything is getting dark. I'm going to kick the bucket. Way! The weapon kicked the bucket. The rabbit kicked the bucket. The rabbit kicked the bucket. The rabbit kicked the bucket. bucket. Next up, Richard and Linda Thompson. This song is the title track from an album they recorded in 1982 as their marriage was falling apart. You can almost hear it fall apart in this song. Here's Richard and Linda Thompson, Shoot Out the Lights. You ever heard Rumble, Richard? Day. 
shoot out with the light. Richard Thompson, with a song that owes a little to Link Ray, Shoot Out the Lights. Recently, Richard has been doing a show called A Thousand Years of Popular Music. He takes a chronological trip that starts with A Thousand Year Old Round and ends with his version of the Britney Spears song, Oops, I Did It Again. And oops, we did it again. We ran out of time. So I'm going to head on out to Ezekiel's gun shop and get myself a new shoulder holster. If you see me coming at you, you better give me a wide berth. I'll see you next week on Theme Time Radio Hour. Peace out.